Hello and welcome to the latest video by Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy. My name is Sean Lacey and in this video I'm going to work through a small bit of um, our studio script that could be used to highlight a, a box plot in a sequence of box plots in an overall image within our studio. So to start this off I'm going to first just look at uh, just getting some script, uh, sorry getting a data frame together. So I'm going to look at where there's going to be 40 measurements or 40 participants they're going to be, we'll say, measured across three time points. So on my line 8, 9, and 10 is just where I'm kind of selecting the, the num numbers randomly. Obviously, on line 7, I'm setting the seed so that the, the random numbers are some way reproducible. On line 11, I'm looking at uh, splitting the data with respect to uh, a low setting and a high setting. So it's kind of like a between subjects factor. Then putting it all together into a data frame. And this is what I get back. I'm just going to view that just so we can just see what the data frame actually is here. So here's the data frame. So you can see here... That there's 40 participants and um, there's a uh, between subjects factor with a low and a high setting then there's a within subjects factor of where participants are tested uh, across three time points again no context really to this this is just general kind of um, I suppose data essentially to uh, illustrate how to highlight a box plot in a sequence of box plots I suppose for consistency and I suppose maybe for a good kind of practice in statistical analysis I'm going to when it comes to the factor I'm going to have set it as a low and a high setting, but I'm going to put the low first, just put it in alphabetical order. Obviously, that's not a requirement, but I suppose it's just good kind of to order your factor based on the levels that you want to use. Uh, obviously, in our studio, it defaults to alphabetical order. Uh, as is traditional, uh, you can see the data frame that I created, it's in a wide format, so I need it to be in a long format, so I'm going to use the gather function part of the tidy or package. And then for that, the time factor, which is the within subjects factor, I'm just going to label the time points T1, T2, T3 as time 1, 2, and 3. And that will bring this back. I think one more bit then here actually is just labeling the time now as an actual factor. And now we're going to be good to go. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to first just look at generating a box plot with respect to one factor. So it's going to be with, with respect to the within subjects factor of time. And just going to do it as a default first in our studio using the obviously the ggplot2 package. And then show a script that you could use to highlight one of the bars if you're interested in. Uh, and obviously, like like most things in our studio, there's more than one way of doing it. Uh, I'm going to use the mutate function in order to kind of create a variable that will highlight the, I suppose, the the box plot that I'm interested in. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, just to, to structure this, if anyone's unsure, using ggplot, specifying the data frame, what, what I'm interested in plotting, which is the time factor and the, uh, the measurement, which is going to be just actually the, the numbers that we actually have. With the box plot, I'm going to put in whiskers for it. Uh, in the actual box plot, I want just the border of the lines around the box plot to have a certain thickness. I want the outlier size to be a size 3. I'm going with team uh, BW team. And then the, my line 28 is just where I'm labeling the axes, scaling the axes. And line 29 is just, um, is just increasing the font size really. And that's going to give me this graphic over here down the bottom right hand side of my screen. And what I just want to kind of show here now is... How could we highlight one of these box plots if you wanted to? Okay, so I'll just zoom in on that there a second so we can just see. So what I'm going to look at doing here is how do I highlight this time tree? Now, there's a few ways that we could do it. You could actually just specify the order of colors for the box plots. But I suppose I want to kind of create a variable using the mutate function, which I'm going to call a highlight one, which is basically going to look at the data. And if it maps to time point three, I want that to be the highlighted measurement. And if, if it doesn't map to it, I don't want it to be. Okay, so... Just to show you how to do this, and like I definitely know a lot of different ways that we could do this. But what I'm doing here is I'm going to use the mutate function as part of the dplyr package. So I'm going to create this variable called highlight one, uh, and how I'm setting up the criteria for whether something's going to be highlighted as a yes or no is if it's equal if the time variable is equal to time tree. So I'm going to look at the level to the time variable that's time tree. If the level is time tree, it's going to be coded as yes. Otherwise, it's going to be coded as no. I'll hope, run that off there and I'll actually just view that so you can just see how this is actually works. So this is the data frame we have. So the first four columns is the original data frame in its long format. And then I'm looking at highlighting a variable. Okay, so I'm highlighting the third time point really. So if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see here, look, the third time point now is highlighted as a yes. Okay, so what I essentially I'm going to do now is I'm going to plot the box plot where this highlight variable is now going to be a factor kind of within the box plot. That's what I'm going to look at doing here, okay? So uh, here, just to kind of give the structure, the first couple of lines are the exact same as my line 27, 28, uh, and nearly 29. What's going to be just different, I suppose, here is I'm just specifying the colors, okay? I'm going to want to specify that I want uh, two of the box plots essentially to be gray, 
and the highlighted box plot to be this steel blue. Now I'm not highlighting all the script yet because there's a re I just want to explain what my line 41 does. So if I set it up here like this at the moment and I'll zoom in here, you can just see, look, it's actually highlighting it quite well. So this is the one that I wanted to highlight it. It's highlighting it as steel blue. The other, one, the other time points that I'm not interested in are staying as gray. The one thing I suppose that we just have to be, I suppose, clear, uh, I suppose clearer with is by having the highlight variable as essentially as a factor, it's then just appearing here in the legend, okay? So it's, which obviously makes sense, but really we don't really need that legend. And I suppose that's what I'm just doing in the last line here on my line 41 is I'm asking our studio to hide that the kind of the fill variable that we're actually using, okay? So um, actually when I said there that this code here is the same as my line 28, 27, 28, 29, obviously what was different is within the axes, so X is time, Y is measure, I said fill is equal to highlight one, okay? So that's how I was using that highlight uh, variable in this case here, okay? And if I just run that off here, you, I, I feel that this works out quite nice. This is a nice looking graph where you can just see, look, they're, they're the two faded ones, the one the uh, boss plots are not interested in. This is the one that we're interested in. Obviously I went with a kind of a gray and the steel blue colors, and I think that that works out quite well. And obviously the legend is just removed there. Okay, so that's the first one. I'm going to do one more time then with when you've two factors because it's not as clear cut maybe I suppose when you do this in our studio that the graph that you get back I don't think it's, it's super and I just wanted to kind of give a, a suggestion of another way and way that I would often do it in my own kind of work as well okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plot the box plot but this time uh, with respect to two factors so I'm going to look at the within subjects factor as being time and then the between subjects factor being kind of the fill factor here. You can just see here on my line 45 that I'm now saying fill equals factor. Now this is not highlighting anything. This is actually kind of nearly the default box plot with respect to two factors. And this is what we get back down on the bottom right hand side of my screen. I'll zoom in out there. This is what we get back, which is lovely. That's exactly what I wanted. I suppose, uh, I suppose what I wanted as a default anyway. And where I want to kind of go with this is I want us to look at where we might highlight time tree but when the factor is at a low setting. So I want to highlight this kind of purple box plot down on the bottom right hand side of my screen. That's what I want to highlight, okay? So again, I'm gonna use the mutate function for this. Quite straightforward for this. And once you kind of know how to do it for one or two, you, you can do it for as many afterwards here as again. So I'm using the dplyr package again, the mutate function. I'm creating this highlight two variable again here. And how it's specifying the highlight two, whether it's a yes or no, is if the factor is at its low setting and time is three, then yes, otherwise no. Okay, so I'll do that here and I'll just view it again just so we can see that it's uh, it's actually working fine and it obviously is. So I'll shoot down here as so you can see there that the new column highlight two, they're all these no's because it's not time three where the factor is at a low setting. And if I come down here to this one here, we're gonna see, there we have it here. I just went a bit too fast there for one sec. And here we have it. So look, you can see that uh, the 81st row, 81st row, sorry, like this, is where the the factor is at a low setting, time is at its high setting, uh, sorry, time is at time three, and you can see it's been highlighted, okay? So it's a yes, and then there's obviously a no for the next one, because that's where the time three is at a high setting, and then it's going, it's to and froing, okay? So it is actually working quite nice here. So that's quite good, I feel that that's a success. So let's plot it, okay? So it's a small bit different now, because if you look at it this way now, the first part here is we want to plot time as, uh, on the horizontal axis, so that's the within subjects factor. On the vert uh, vertical axis is the measurement, so what, what are actually continuous measurement actually is. Then we're splitting it with this, co the color is going to be equal to factor in this case. Now, you could either do color equals factor or fill equals factor. You can to and fro to be between which way you want to do it here, okay? But essentially what we're looking at, what really is happening behind the scenes is where you're plotting measure, the measurement, and you essentially have three factors. One is your time. The other is actually your factor with the low and high setting, and the other is your highlight factor. Okay, so what that means then is you're going to have to specify the color and the fill. Okay, and you can to, to and fro between whether you want the color to be your factor or your fill to be the factor. It doesn't really matter. If I do this here, uh, what I'm looking at here, so this, that's basically all that's new to that bit is just that you have the color and the factor. The box plot, the size, the labeling, that's on line 56. The scaling of the axes increasing the font size is on line 57. Then on line 58, so line 58 is where I'm specifying what colors I want to fill with, okay? So I'm specifying gray and steel blue, and then I'm specifying what color I actually want, kind of the color genus here, the way color is equal to factor. I want to specify what colors I want for that. Now, actually, if I do it in stages here, I'll just actually I'll leave out the color part here at the moment. And if I run this off here, this is what we get back, okay? So this, and now it's not perfect yet, okay? But you can see it is working in the right direction. 
that basically all the box pots are gray there's the blue one here which you want and i'll tidy up the legend and over here in a few minutes but it's it all seems to be working out nicely the other thing that maybe if you want to tell you is you might want to specify what you want the border to the box plots to actually be um in a way you could say that you'd like them to be black uh, but if you like them to be black, what you'll find is it, it the, the graph then isn't distinguishing between the low and the high setting for the factor. And I'll show you what I mean there now for this. So um, I'm actually going to change this here. I'm going to put this in as black first, okay? And uh, I'll highlight, I'll leave out the, la I'm not highlighting all the script yet. I'll just open, run this off here. Now it's not perfect yet, but I suppose this is kind of getting closer to what we want. Now, again, if you look at it at a glance, all the box plots are gray and there's the one that's the steel blue, which is what I wanted. But I suppose the fact that there's another factor the between subjects factor, we're not distinguishing between where is the low and the high setting for the between subjects factor because the border for all the box plots are, uh, are black. So here maybe you'd say it's obvious, but over here you can see, look, that they're both gray. So which is the low setting, which is the high setting? It's not very clear cut. So what you could do in this case is, it, and that's why I had the script here is red. This is where I'm looking at the color, the factor that I'm saying is the color, which is basically the trim of the box plot. I'm coloring it as black, I'm coloring it as black and red. Now, if I show you this, again, I don't think it's it's super, but I suppose it's a natural transition on from the last one. Uh, so this is what we get back. Now, it is a work in progress here. So you can just see, look, there's, there's all the grays, and then there's the steel blue. So this is the one we wanted to highlight. The only thing that I do feel is a bit confusing with this is the fact that the borders to the box plots are changing in color. Now, the reason they change in color is because of the low and high setting, but I don't feel that it makes the graph that easy to interpret, even if I get rid of this highlight bit here, which is using that guides fill equals false. So I'll run this off properly now this time. So this is the script that I have. I, I feel that that graph is, I suppose, moving in the right direction. My only concern with it is, I don't know, is it easily interpretable? Okay, now I think we know what we want because obviously we've run through the script and we know that we want to highlight a particular uh, component to the, uh, which is essentially this, the blue, the steel blue. But I feel that it is a bit confusing the, the red and black border around the box spots. Okay, so even though that this script works and it, I mean, it does what we kind of wanted to do, I feel it's a bit confusing and I felt, and that's why I suppose, and this video is going on a small bit now, but I suppose I wanted to show another way of doing it because I don't use this approach to what I'm showing here from line 54 down to line 60. I don't use that approach often in my own work. Uh, I do it for a single factor like I showed you up above. I thought that was fine. But if I had more than one factor, I'd use, often use the facet grid as my approach to that. Now, I still use the, uh, the mutate with the highlight too. So that highlight too is still going to be needed here. But if I work through this, what's we doing here? So I'm looking at the data frame, the DF data frame. There's the within subjects factor, there is the measurement, and then I'm filling based on highlight two, sorry, filling it based on highlight two. Then the rest parts here, the whiskers, the thickness of the border to the box plot, the high, uh, the thickness to the actual um, outliers, labeling the axes, scaling the axes, increasing the font size. So what's going to be new here for this one is line 67 now here is instead of saying color equals factor like I did up here on line 55, I said color equals factor, I'm doing facet grid equals factor now. And then afterwards, all I'm doing, and this is just, I suppose, actually, look, I'll, leave, I'll do it in that bit first here. And then I'll do how I kind of finish it off, try to make it pretty, we'll say like this. I feel that this is working nicely. I think what it's doing here is it's quite clearly highlighting the one that we're interested in, which is time tree at the low setting. The low and the high settings are distinguished, they're separate, and all the other bars then are kind of this peachy color. The, obviously, the only thing that I suppose it wouldn't necessarily like is the fact that the factor, this highlight uh, variable that we've created is actually stated in the graph. So that's what the rest of my script does here is I'm removing the legend. So at the end of line 67 and then on line 68 is I'm just using this with the gray and the steel blue colors as well. That's all I'm doing. And that's just to kind of line it up with the previous way of doing it. I feel me personally, I feel that this is a better graph. I think that look here, you can see look that we have the low and the high setting for the factor. All the box plots are gray, except the one that we're interested in highlighting. They all have a border of black around them. I, I, for me personally, I think that that's a bit clearer. It's a bit easier to understand as opposed to the one previous. Now, again, it's not that there was anything wrong with the one previous, but I think often the thing is when you're producing these graphs, they need to be some way easily interpretable. If you feel that this is easily straightforward to interpret, then brilliant. Uh, I'd be a small bit cautious with it. Okay, I'd be a small bit cautious with it, and that's why I just wanted to show you the facet grid. Um, I'm just going to finish this video off. That's kind of, I suppose, the main new material. I just want to say, I just dropped the last bit here is just a, with the thumbnail that's up here on the, um, for, for the video. I just wanted to show, um, 
I suppose the colors and how it was designed and I've done this in the last couple of videos because some people I suppose they might be interested in the thumbnail and maybe reproducing it to a certain extent so these this was told, all designed now by my daughter uh, so here my daughter Ava so here I'm just going to take P4 actually I'll just highlight what P4 is again here look here's P4 that's this one here which isn't the one that we're, we're mad about but I, I'm using that as the baseline here and then all I'm looking at doing here is pick, using the colors that Ava selected here, medium purple ones, a uh, spring green one for the fill. The color is going to be cyan in both cases. And then removing the labels of the X and Y axes, removing the, the scaling of the axes, removing the legends and everything like that. And that will then finish it off with the, uh, with the thumbnail that was used for this video. Okay, so look, that's it. Um, like always uh, for these videos, um, if you like it, then feel free, please uh, like and share. Uh, you, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get updates when the uh, next uh, video is going to be uploaded. Uh, in the description below here, I'm going to link to another video that I have, which looks at a bit more uh, information in relation to outliers, kind of the different formatting techniques that you might be able to apply and you might be interested in uh, uh, when it comes to, sorry, not outliers, but actually box plots in general in GG plots. So that's, if you look at the description below, you'll see that there'll be a link to another video that I have. And if you have any other ideas of, I suppose, uh, videos or different kind of uh, approaches to our studio that you feel will be useful to know uh, that you might be uh, have seen in another package, then feel free to comment below, anything like that, uh, and I'll see can I maybe produce a video uh, tailored to your needs, okay? But for the moment, um, thanks very much for listening and all the best.